Hello again folks, this is just a quick follow-up video to my previous upload where I cover that rather dodgy Chinese GPS jamming device. If you've seen that video, you will recall that I mentioned that people might be inclined to use such a device to defeat one of these, which is a car insurance black box GPS tracker. Now quite a few people commented, I think quite a few Americans actually, and they were somewhat aghast at the concept of someone using one of these uh, black box recorders to you know essentially save a couple of quid on your car insurance citing that it's an invasion of privacy and a little bit big brotherish uh, and i suppose to a certain extent they're right um, but i thought we'd get one uh, take a look inside it and uh, see how it works at a very basic level so let's go ahead and do that um, i got this particular device off ebay for a couple of quid including delivery um because they're so common nowadays um you know car breakers you know vehicle dismantlers whatever you want to call them are pulling these out of uh, cars there is no value to them um they're not a spare part as such so if they can get a couple of quid sell it to a geek like me on ebay they're gonna do it um this is a red tail vam hd from what i can see um it's this uh, standard black box you're going to get from UK insurers, um, although I think they do sell these worldwide. Um, they're super cheap, I would imagine, to manufacture. Um, you know, they are so common now. And um, yeah, they seem to do the job. So we'll have a look inside, like I say. And um, before we do that, you'll note there's a big gaping hole here. Now, I thought maybe something was broken off or something like that, but having looked online, Pretty much everyone I can see for sale has this gaping hole here. So let's take this screw out and have a look inside. So it's just a single screw that holds the two halves together. It's just a clamshell type case. There is no waterproofing on this. Um, and as you can see, that gaping hole reveals provision there for an external GPS antenna. Yeah, I don't know why that hasn't got some sort of rubber bung in it or something. It isn't a waterproof case, but of course insects and other little creepy crawlies could get in there potentially and could, of course, cause damage. Um, but like I say, because these are so cheap, they're, they're almost disposable. So let's have a look at the device itself. Um, so double-sided board and yeah essentially what it's doing is it's using this gps uh, antenna this patch antenna to monitor of course the position um but there will be an accelerometer in here under one of these cans we'll have a look in underneath those and see if we can see anything interesting and what it does is it takes the the position and the you know the the accelerometer uh, accelerometer data and puts it through a cellular device we can see there's this tellet quad v3 with the old imei number there and that's basically pumping that data back to your car insurance company uh, in this case it's using a, an orange sim card now i don't know how long orange have been out of business well they're not out of business they merged with t-mobile to form ee which is now owned by british telecom and so this is probably a couple of years old now um given it's an orange sim card but yeah, that data goes over the, the cellular uh, network. And of course, if you're a good driver, you're going to get cheaper insurance. But if you're driving like a maniac, then your insurance company may put your insurance costs up. Of course, this data is also monitoring the number of miles you're doing. For instance, my son, I think, is capped at 5,000 miles a year. And for every 100 miles uh on top of that that he uses he can top it up but it is fairly expensive it's over 100 pounds i think for each 100 miles or something or maybe a thousand miles i think it's 136 pounds for a thousand miles maybe um it is you know really expensive um but yeah one of these things does in some cases cause you to save a few pounds on your insurance right enough uh, rambling on let's uh, pop the cans off this And see what we can see. Oh, that sounded like something breaking. Yep, <laughs> little inductor there. Not to worry, this will never be used again. Okay, so here we go. So we've got our GPS antenna here, and we've got um we make that. Furuno, okay, so Furuno, if there are any sailors watch my channel, you'll be familiar with that name. Uh, they make a lot of um, maritime positioning sensors, uh, that sort of stuff. And this is an E-Drive, 
e drive opus 7 so yeah that's the um, gps uh, chipset the fact that it's called e drive would suggest that it is you know proprietary or, or, or specific for um, driving devices we've got the uh, uh, cellular package there that as I say that's a Telet uh, GL865 Quad V3 that's what's converting the data or sending the data I should say um, back to the, the servers um, and here looks like we've got our sensor suite in there um, looks like a little small accelerometer in the top right corner there and other bits and pieces and there's a little broken inductor that I just smashed and on the other side this is more uh, I imagine this is uh, the data, or, you know, what's converting the data, uh, probably serial data into data that can be sent over the cellular network. In here we've got, oh, this looks like a MOSFET, and 573, I'm sure that's a, that looks like a voltage regulator, maybe a, you know, some sort of controllable voltage regulator. And that's that's all it is really. Um, there looks like a lot of connections here. Um, I didn't get a cable with this. However, looking at the the installation manual from um, Redtail themselves, only three wires are required. You've got a ground. You've got a uh, plus twelve volts or plus thirteen point eight volts, whatever it is on the vehicle, and you've got an ignition sense. So um, if the ignition is off, that means in the the ignition sense that is zero volts going in. That means it's just sitting dormant and I would imagine that it would update its position maybe once every five minutes or something like that. Um, however, once you turn the ignition on and the device senses that there's a 12 volt uh, or 13.8 volts coming in from the ignition, that's when it will probably fire up the sensor suite um, and start monitoring driver behaviour. Um, like I say, there is no real way of getting round one of these. If you've got one fitted, unfortunately, you're stuck with it. That is the that is the the compromise you're going to have to make to save a few quid on your car insurance. If you were to somehow take this out and uh, hook it up to a 12 volt supply sitting outside your house, like I say, when it comes to you getting your annual safety check, we call it an MOT test here in the UK, um, and that data from your MOT gets uploaded to the D uh, sorry is it the driving um I don't know the old Ministry of Transport um sort of servers you can actually search any vehicle registration here in the UK and get uh, the the test result data um and it tells you the mileage as well. So these companies are not stupid they will check that when you renew your insurance and if you uh, if your MOT shows that you've done 12,000 miles, yet your little black box in your car says you've done four, then they know you're at it. Your insurance is going to get cancelled or refused. And of course, that's going to uh, pop your premiums up yet again. So there we go. Um, not a particularly um, interesting video, I don't suppose. But I just thought it'd be nice to take a look inside one of those. Save you taking your own one to bits if you've got one. Um, if you enjoyed the video, of course, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me the thumbs down. Uh, feel free to comment if you have anything to add. Of course, any interaction via any of those methods is great for the channel. Uh, YouTube like to see a bit of interaction from viewers. Um, if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you consider clicking on the fat head down here to subscribe or even my new little logo, which should be down at the bottom right of this uh, screen. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.